From the very start of your talk, I was very interested to ask you a particular question. So I've heard that smokers get a higher radiation dose than astronauts because of uh, radioactive particles inside the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a YouTube channel about science, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure the information is quite correct. Mm. But it was so shocking uh, to me that it stayed in my head. And so as you're a specialist, maybe you have some thoughts on the topic. So I'm not a specialist on the radioactivity in cigarettes, so I couldn't really speak about that. But it's definitely possible to get higher levels of radiation on Earth. So if you're closer to radioactive things, then you can get radiation sickness then, or long-term effects. But modern astronauts actually have a very good way of avoiding radiation, and that is stay out of it. So the radiation belts are at 1,100 kilometers and above. But the International Space Station is below this. And there are only occasional times where we have these uh, big storms on the sun, like the ones I just showed, um, that eject these particles into space. And sometimes a few of those can make it through our magnetic field. And at those times, the astronauts need to take shelter. But it's usually precautionary, and they go under lots of water, which is very good at shielding from radiation. So they find all the water in the station and they get into it. Well, not into it, and they're not swimming. Um, so the Apollo missions, though, I imagine probably had a higher level than a smoker, at least in one cigarette, because that was the equivalent of a chest X-ray. Um, that's when you go into these regions of radiation. Is there any radiation in electronic devices? And if so, is it harmful to humans? Um, no, I don't think there are high levels of radiation. But we do use um, the energy in the particles to create that electricity. What the radiation does to interact with that is they cause more electricity. And that's when we have a surge of electricity through our instruments. So if there was radiation in your circuit, in your device, then it would actually cause a lot of problems. Thank you. Did we have another question in the center there? No? Oh, uh, just one down here at the front. Thank you very much. If we were in Mars, um, would they have, like, the radioactive, would they have, like, the magnetic, um, protection so that's a really good question so mars used to have a molten core but over time it cooled down and we actually have these remnant magnetic fields on the surface of mars but they're very small so they won't provide enough protection from these particles but during these radiation storms you certainly get a lot of radiation on mars which means that if we ever want to go to Mars and stay there for a long time, we're going to have to protect ourselves. And one of the ways to do this is going underground, maybe a natural cave, or maybe we have to dig underground to shield ourselves from that radiation. Thank you. Um, was there anyone in the gallery that had a question? Do all um, bodies not just in the solar system, but elsewhere, that have magnetic fields also have anana belts? It has been predicted that it can. And we can measure magnetic fields on other planet, uh, planet, not the planets, but the stars themselves. Um, and I know of some research which has looked at it on brown dwarf stars, and they think that there's radiation trapped around a small star is possible. Um, and this is an area of research I, I'm interested in, but I don't know how much headway we've made in that field. There are certainly uh, other planets in our solar system which have giant magnetic fields. Jupiter has a huge magnetic field, and that traps a lot of radiation in it. There are radiation on other planets, so I don't see why it's not possible to have them outside of our solar system. It's a, just a matter of managing to detect that radiation. 
it's look seems to me that I mean I'm a, a film graduate and a film programmer, so I've watched a lot of science fiction and sort of hard science films about space travel. It seems that virtually none of them, in my experience, ever deal with the issue of radiation. <laughs> Have you ever seen a a film about space travel which has a sort of reasonable sort of attention to detail with hard science has ever dealt with the issue of radiation? Like, I don't think it came up in the film The Martian at all. Like, he just lived on Mars for a year, and that was fine. I was so. thinking about that the other day. <laughs> I've seen the film, and years later, I'm like, hang on. <laughs> um, yes, if you would like to employ me as a consultant, <laughs> then I'd love a job. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be really great to see that visualised on the bigger screen. Um, and I think that would be a really interesting... Uh, topic that a lot of viewers of TV haven't seen. I believe there was, was there a question? Yep, just behind you, Dominique. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So if I remember well from uni, there was an area over, the, over South America where the radiation belt uh, get, gets closer to Earth. Yes. So it is known uh, the reason for the radiation belt to get closer in this area? That's to do with the orientation of our magnetic field. So it's not an absolutely perfect dipole centered on the Earth. It's got slight variations in it. And if you imagine it as like a bar magnet in the Earth, it's kind of shifted towards the side. And that means that if you have that stronger field, which would normally be a thousand kilometers off the surface, when it shifts, it then gets much closer to Earth. And that's what's happening over the South Atlant Atlantic anomaly. Thank you. And did I see, oh, yeah, a question down here at the front. How does the sun, like, have those thunderstorm things? How does it happen? So, it's a process called magnetic reconnection which is a bit hard to visualize. So the sun's magnetic field is not a dipole. It's not simple and smooth. It's really complex, and it gets really twisted up. Like if you twist an elastic band into a ball, and then you stretch it, what happens is that elastic band snaps. And all of that elastic band, or our magnetic field, can explode off. And that's a solar storm. It's because of the magnetic field and the energy release in that magnetic field. Thank you. And did I see a hand up down here? Yep. So we've got time for one more question, so you'll be the last one. There we go. Uh, so when you said dig under the ground, do you mean just dig a pit or just or dig a tunnel and then make a cove underground in a, so in a storm? Good question. I wasn't very clear, was I? You need to dig so that you've got ground above you to shield you from that radiation. So if you dig a pit, then there's still nothing protecting you. So you have to actually burrow underground until you have a nice, thick layer of crust to protect you from that radiation. Excellent. Thank you very much. So we have run out of time, I'm afraid, but um, thank you very much, Francis. A huge round of applause.